the cell mediated immunity is a part of the adaptive immunity or also called as the acquired immunity a quite uh, complicated topic stay with me till the end of the video and i'm sure your concepts will be cleared the cell mediated immunity is also called as the cellular immune response and it is mediated by a variety of lymphocyte which is called as the t lymphocyte and there is one more variety which is called as the b lymphocyte which is involved in humoral immunity or also called as antibody mediated immunity now for the cell mediated immunity exposure to antigen is a must okay there is one more type of immunity which is called as innate immunity wherein i don't require a prior exposure to antigen okay here i need an exposure to the antigen and the cell mediated immunity provides protection against various fungal infections viruses and very importantly against the intracellular pathogens prior to plunging into the details of the steps and stages of the cell mediated immunity i would like to tell you two important things that there are two types of t lymphocytes just we should know that there are two types of t lymphocytes one is called as a cd4 plus t lymphocyte another one is called as the cd8 plus t lymphocyte okay and one more thing that we have to understand is regarding this thing which is called as major histocompatibility complex okay so what is this complex and all let's just try and understand because because if you don't understand this it's uh, the things ahead will not be very much clear okay so let's say this is a cell here okay fine and uh, let's say this is a virus which has entered into the body and now this virus is going to infect this cell okay so once the virus has entered into the cell this virus will be broken down into smaller antigenic fragments these are called as the antigenic fragments now there is something which is present inside the cell which is called as a major histocompatibility complex so what is the role or function of the major histocompatibility complex is that it is going to bind to these antigenic fragments which have entered into the cell fine so there is going to be binding of these antigenic fragments to the major histocompatibility complex and this combination of major histocompatibility complex and the antigen it is going to express itself onto the surface of the cell in this manner so this is our major histocompatibility complex and this is our antigen okay so this entire process is very much important so that this antigen is presented to the t lymphocyte the antigen is presented to the t lymphocyte so this mhc identifies these foreign antigens which have entered into the cell binds with that and it displays on the surface of the cell and then it presents this t lymphocyte uh, presents this antigen to the t lymphocyte and these major histocompatibility complexes are two types one is called as mhc1 okay this presents antigen to our cd8 t lymphocytes that's why i have mentioned these two lymphocytes okay and this mhc1 it is present in almost all the cells with a exception of red blood cells rbc and then we have major histocompatibility complex 2 this is the one which is presents the antigen to the cd4 plus t lymphocyte and mhc2 is present in the cells of immune system okay or to be more specific these are called as antigen presenting cells antigen presenting cells okay uh, one very good example of the antigen presenting cell i can give to you is what is called as a dendritic cell dendritic cell okay so that means there are two types of t lymphocytes cd4 and cd8 and then we have studied what's the role of this complex which is called as the major histocompatibility complex remember that major histocompatibility complex is going to bind to the antigenic foreign antigenic fragments which have entered into the cell 
and then it is going to display this itself and the foreign antigen onto the surface of the cell. This is called as presentation of this foreign antigen to the T lymphocyte. So now let's plunge into the steps and the mechanism of the cell mediated immunity. The first step is antigen processing and presentation, okay, half of which I have already discussed while explaining the MHC. Next step is antigen recognition by the T lymphocyte. Once this antigen is presented to the T lymphocyte, the T lymphocyte should recognize this antigen. Once the T lymphocyte recognizes this antigen, the T lymphocyte becomes activated and it proliferates. And then the last phase is what is called as the attack phase. So let's try and understand uh, each one of them. Okay. So let's say again the same thing. This is an infected cell and this is a cell and this is our nucleus. And here we can see these are the antigenic fragments which are present inside the cell. So now inside the cell we are also having this major histocompatibility complex one. So what did I tell you is the function of this MHC? It is going to bind to these antigenic fragments and as you are seeing here it is going to display onto the surface of the cell. So here we have a combination of MHC1 and antigen so that the antigen is now presented to the T lymphocyte. Now because it is MHC1, it presents the antigen to CD8 plus T lymphocyte. Now this entire process is what is called as antigen processing and presentation. Now our CD8 plus T lymphocyte has to recognize this antigen and that recognition is occurring because of presence of these receptors which you are seeing this one okay this is called as the t cell receptor okay so this entire process is antigen processing presentation and then antigen recognition in a similar way we can also have an antigen presenting cell and this cell is going to identify this microbe or a foreign antigen and then this cell is a phagocytic cell Hence, it is going to engulf this foreign antigen and once it is engulfed, it is cut down into smaller pieces or it is broken down into smaller antigenic fragments. Once that occur, again we are having major histocompatibility complex here and it is 2 which is present in the antigen presenting cell. Now, these antigenic fragments are going to bind with that and this combination of MHC2 and the antigen is going to display here onto the surface of the cell so that this antigen which is attached to the MHC molecule will be recognized by the T cell. This is the T cell. And what type of T cell it is here? Now, because it is a MHC2 molecule here, the T cell should be CD4 plus T lymphocyte. And how does the T cell recognize the antigen? Because of the T cell receptors. So here we have, I have a uh, made you understand the two steps. The first step was antigen processing plus presentation. The second step was the recognition of this antigen by the T lymphocyte. Now, how does that occur? That occur because of the presence of the T cell receptor. Okay. So, here we have the MHC1 along with the antigen and this MHC1 is presenting this antigen to CD8 plus T lymphocyte and the CD8 plus lymphocyte is having the receptor for identification of the antigen which is called as the T cell receptor. Similarly, here we have the MHC2 again along with the antigen and this antigen is presented to CD4 plus T lymphocyte and for identification of that antigen we are having again the T cell receptor. Okay. Now let's say this antigen is recognized by this CD8 plus T lymphocyte. Now once the antigen is recognized by the CD8 plus as well as the CD4 plus T lymphocytes, both of them are going to become activated. Okay. And then they proliferate or they are going to differentiate into two more varieties of cells. The CD8 plus T lymphocyte is going to differentiate into two types of cells. Okay. One is called as the cytotoxic cell. Okay. Or it is also called as the killer cell. 
and the second one is called as the suppressor cell okay now similarly the cd4 plus t lymphocyte is also going to proliferate into two types of cells one is called as the helper t cell okay and the second one is called as the memory t cell fine so now ultimately we have got four type of t lymphocytes what are these the helper t cell the memory t cell the cytotoxic t cell and the suppressor t cell and remember the helper t cells are again having two subtypes one is called as helper t cell 1 and another one is called as the helper t cell 2 okay so this entire process is what is called as antigen recognition okay that is done followed by that what is going to happen there is lymphocyte activation and proliferation okay the most important cell among these four cells is the cytotoxic t cell okay the cytotoxic t cell is also called as the killer t cell why because it is going to kill the foreign antigens or the foreign cells which have entered into our body now this killing can occur by three ways one mechanism is what is called as perforin mediated killing so the cytotoxic t cells are going to secrete perforin and this perforin what does it do is let's say this is a virus or a foreign body so this perforin is going to get embedded in the cell membrane of this virus so these perforins are nothing but they are going to punch holes in the cell membrane of the foreign body so now once holes are punched in the cell membrane of the foreign body the water from outside is going to enter inside this is because of the osmosis okay now what is going to happen to this cell this cell is ultimately going to expand and then it is going to rupture so now this cell death is occurring by lysis so this is one very important method of cell killing second method of cell killing is by release of cytotoxic substances and these are also called as the cytokines and the third method is the cytotoxic t cell can induce apoptosis in the foreign cell by secretion of tumor necrosis factor even that is also going to result in the death of the cell okay so three three ways perforin mediated killing release of the cytotoxic substances and induction of apoptosis next is let's understand the role of the helper t cell as the name itself is suggesting these are going to help somewhere so let's see where is it that they are going to help as i have told you that there are two types of helper t cells one is helper t cell 1 and this helper t cell 1 is going to secrete two important cytokines we have to remember the names of this one is called as interleukin 2 and the one is called as interferon gamma and what does that do that is going to cause activation of this cytotoxic cell okay that means it is causing activation of cell mediated immunity it is helping in the activation of the cell mediated immunity now there is a second cell which is called as type 2 helper cell and the type 2 helper cell secretes interleukin 4 5 6 and 10 this is very very interesting because the type 2 helper cell is causing activation of the b cells okay so where are b cells involved the b cells are involved in the humoral immunity why I said this is interesting here is because the helper cells are a part of the cell mediated immunity and they are stimulating or they are activating B cells and hence they are activating the antibody mediated immunity or the humoral immunity. So such a thing is happening between the T and the B cell and this is what is called as TB cooperation. TB cooperation. So that means the helper cells are not only helping in the activation of the self uh, the cell mediated immunity but they are also helping in the activation of the antibody mediated immunity by activating the b cells 
So this is the role of the cytotoxic T cell and the helper T cell. Now we have the third type of T cell which is called as the suppressor T cell. As the name suggests again here, suppressor means it is suppressing something. So what is it that it is suppressing? So it is suppressing the activity of the cytotoxic T cell. Sometimes what happens is that the cytotoxic T cell becomes overly active. So once if the cytotoxic T cell is over activated, it becomes difficult for the cytotoxic T cell to differentiate between a normal cell and a foreign cell. Okay, so there is a chance when there is super activation of the cytotoxic T cell that this cytotoxic T cell may also start killing the normal cell. So this shouldn't occur. So that is what is done by the suppressor T cell. So suppressor T cell is going to regulate the activity of the cytotoxic T cell so that the normal tissue is not damaged. Not only that, the suppressor T cell also checks the activity of the helper T cell. Why is that? Because it is the helper T cell which is going to activate both the cell mediated immunity as well as the humoral immunity. So if I keep the activity of the helper T cell in check, the activation of the cell mediated immunity as well as the antibody mediated immunity also will be under control. So suppressor T cell is the one which is controlling this uh, immune response which is happening in the body. Next is the last cell which is the memory T cell as the name again implies here it is going to have the memory of that infection or of that antigen okay and hence it is responsible for mounting of the secondary response. So I will just explain what is this secondary response. Let's say an antigen has entered into my body it's a foreign antigen or let's say it's a virus. So for mounting the immune response for the first time my body is going to take some time okay and then there is going to be an immune response and this immune response is slowly going to fade off so this immune response which is mounted by the body against the antigen for the very first time is what is called as a primary immune response Okay, it is called as a primary immune response and for mounting of the primary immune response, I am taking some time, okay, like a latent period or a lag period which is there. Now, let's say this antigen has entered into the body again, it's the same antigen. Now, I am going to mount an immune response which is far more better than the first time immune response and this is what is called as secondary immune response okay and here you are seeing even there is no time gap between the entry of the antigen and the mounting of the secondary immune response how does body mount the secondary immune response because now the body remembers this antigen and that is what is done by the memory t cell so memory t cells are the one which are important in mounting of the secondary response so these are the stages and the mechanism of the cell mediated immunity. I hope I was clear in making you understanding the concepts behind the cell mediated immunity. If that's the case, kindly hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.